on daylight bombing missions and reconnaissance flights over vital sectors depend on good visibility. Destroy their ability to sight a target with bullseye accuracy and you prevent costly direct hits. As one means of prevention, chemical warfare offers a weapon called air defense smoke. At Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, a demonstration of its use begins with the simulated detection from an observation post of the approach of enemy planes at a great distance. The information is flashed to nearby Fort Brady and the command post which is responsible for the placement and firing of air defense smoke generators. Trucks and generators are manned by the specially trained crew who move to a firing line determined by the existing wind conditions. The method generally followed is to install a column of generators at a point approximately a mile or two from the target. The mechanical smoke generator weighs 5,000 pounds when full and does the job of converting a heavy oil, called special oil, and water vapor into a white smoke. The smoke is emitted in the form of a dense streamer, which hangs above the area being blotted out. Thus, while the target is obscured from would-be attackers flying overhead, operations on the ground can proceed at a normal pace. The smoke from each generator travels as an individual streamer for about 100 yards or more downwind of the line. Then, a merging process begins, a build-up which continues for several hundred yards, during which time the holes and thin spots in the smoke blanket disappear. Finally, some 500 yards downwind, the streamers have become a solid curtain. It often remains effective for as much as 10 miles downwind. The coverage looks complete even from this height. To enemy bombers kept at 10,000 feet or higher by anti-aircraft, it would appear as merely a small white cloud. The Norfolk Navy Yard presents an opportunity for a wider display of air defense smoke. For in addition to major American war plants, the smoke is used to protect canals, dams, ports of embarkation, and other strategic points. In overseas theaters of operations, supply depots, motor pools, and ports of debarkation also come under the smoke generator's assignments. Unseen, but always on the alert, the generators are on 24-hour watch, shifting their position according to the direction of the wind. To accomplish this, closest coordination with the command post is vital. Here, instructions are issued by radio to section leaders for the changing of generator placements. Again, according to wind conditions. The section leader, from his radio-equipped chief, reports the wind direction at the firing line. Meteorology equipment at the command post handles the main burden of recording wind direction and wind velocity. A ceiling balloon and that device with the rotating cups called the anemometer are employed. Inside, indicating lights flash on the special gauge on the wall. Each little variance in the wind is shown. All information is recorded on weather maps. Then, should invading aircraft be sighted, procedure is simple and rapid. The radio operator at the command post relays the commanding officer's instructions based on last-minute wind observations, both at the post and at the firing positions, where the section leaders are already driving along the firing line, putting the generators on the alert. On the order to make smoke, the generators start discharging the protective screen. An offshore-based generator operates from a motor launch. How wide the smoke blanket will be depends on the number of generators used. As a rule, the generators are spaced at 100 to 150 yard intervals, and the width of the blanket will be just a trifle wider than the total width of the line of generators. War 
warships and all important installations in the vicinity of the Norfolk Navy Yard are shielded by the overhead blanket of smoke. contrast, the following scenes were photographed from almost identical camera placements before and after the generators went to work. They show how effective the smoke can be. Of course, as seen from the air, concealment of the objects is complete. Again, it should be pointed out that normal activity in the yard is not halted while the smoke blanket is in effect. Defense smoke from mechanical smoke generators set up in important areas can blot out a given territory so that destructive precision bombing and accurate aerial observation are difficult for the enemy to accomplish. Another effective weapon provided by chemical warfare.